learners, it's M from Sound Nerds, and this video is going to be on thyroid anatomy for the sonographer. So we know it's important to learn anatomy, but let's talk a little bit more about what's in it for you. So first off, we nearly need to know embryology of the thyroid because that's really going to help us to understand why some congenital pathologies occur. It's also going to be super important that we know the normal anatomy based on graphics. So when we actually get into those ultrasound images, we can start to recognize the relational anatomy. And lastly, being aware of normal variants can really reduce the amount of overcalling pathologies. If we see something looks a little weird with an organ, we need to know is that a true pathology or is this just a common normal variant uh, due to the way that the organ developed. So let's take a look at thyroid embryology. It is the first endocrine gland to develop and starts about the third week of gestation, so very, very early. It'll be fully functional by the end of the first trimester. The thyroid is found beneath the tongue in the embryo and then descends along the thyroglossal duct to its final spot in the neck. Remnants of the thyroid can be found anywhere along that ductal tract, and that's going to be known as ectopic thyroid tissue. In image A, we can see where the tongue is and the thyroglossal duct on the embryo. Image B shows us again where the tongue is and how the thyroglossal duct is related to the position of the tongue and the position of the thyroid in its final spot in the neck. So again, ectopic tissue can be anywhere along this duct, and sometimes we'll see fluid fill within this duct as well, and that's a thyroglossal duct cyst. The thyroid is made of soft tissue arranged into two lobes. We have the right lobe and we have the left lobe. There is a connection across the trachea called the isthmus, which literally means bridge. The thyroid is located in the anterior neck. In this image, we can see that the thyroid sits anterior to the trachea and inferior to the hyoid bone. Behind the thyroid is the thyroid cartilage. The thyroid is supplied by the superior and inferior thyroid arteries. The superior part of the thyroid is supplied with oxygen-rich blood from the right and left superior thyroid arteries. These arteries are the first branches of the right and left external carotid arteries, or the ECAs. The bottom half of the thyroid is supplied by the right and left inferior thyroid arteries. These are branches of the thyrocervical trunks, which branch from the subclavian arteries. The thyroid is drained then by the superior, middle, and inferior thyroid veins. The right and left superior thyroid veins run near the superior arteries and drain into the internal jugular veins. The middle thyroid veins also drain into the jugular veins. And then the right and left inferior thyroid veins arise from the venous plexus that allows all thyroid veins to communicate. The inferior veins connect into the right and left innominate veins. Let's take a look at a cross section of the neck more towards the inferior portion of the thyroid. Major muscles sit anterior to the thyroid. In this cross section, we can see the sternocleidomastoid muscle as the most superficial. These very large muscles connect to the sternum, clavicle, and jawbone to support and move the head. The strap muscles are also bilateral muscles that can be seen adjacent to the thyroid. The strap muscles include the sternohyoid, the sternothyroid, and the omohyoid. Remembering the order that these go in is very important. Lateral and slightly posterior to the thyroid are the major vessels of the neck, the carotid artery and jugular vein. The vagus nerve also transverses in this area. Posterior to the thyroid is the longest coli muscle, which sits next to the spinal vertebrae. It can be seen on both sides of the neck and actually can mimic a mass on ultrasound. And then medial to the thyroid is the trachea. The larynx is also medial to the thyroid, but not depicted at the inferior level of the neck. The esophagus 
is also medial to the thyroid, but tends to sit a little bit more towards the left and can be easily seen when imaging the left lobe of the thyroid and is also commonly mistaken for a medial mass. The most common variant of the thyroid is the presence of a pyramidal lobe. The pyramidal lobe affects about 10 to 40% of the population. It is a triangular piece of parenchyma that extends from the isthmus towards the chin. And while it can arise from any part of the isthmus, it is most commonly seen towards the left side. Other variants include ectopic thyroid tissue, which is commonly seen underneath the tongue, the absence of an isthmus, asymmetry of the lobes where one lobe is larger, or the absence of one of the lateral lobes.